First Samuel chapter two. Samuel was one of the great men on earth. His little little child story of how he came to be in the temple as a little mini prophet, a servant unto the Lord, is a very wonderful story. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 1, with Elkanah and Hannah, his mother, dedicating him to the Lord before he was even born. And we kind of carry on with that little tradition in the New Testament church to some extent. But let's get on with 1 Samuel chapter 2 here. Hannah's exalting the Lord here. She is now dedicating her son physically to the Lord's work. And he's Samuel is now going to stay in and around the temple as a very young child being raised in the Lord. The Son of God is going to be very close to Samuel. And it's going to start at a very young age. And that's always the best way to raise your children. Start teaching them young. The precepts of the Lord. Uh, train up a child in the way he shall go. And as he gets old, the Bible says he will not turn away from it. The best translation would be, as he's young and he learns godly principles, he will know as an adult which way he wants to choose. Because salvation is a choice. And you know and I know, every pastor's kid that has been raised in a church in the right way has not chosen the Lord Jesus as his Savior and as his guide in this life. We know that. We see it. Um, what happens to them in a, as an old person, we don't really know. They have opportunity. Um, but salvation is a choice. But we give them the groundwork to say, there you go. If, if you're wise, you will choose these principles I will train you up in. We see that later on in the life of Samuel. Samuel was one of the most godly men on earth. You can bet he raised his sons up in the precepts of the Lord. However, his sons were not good men. His sons did not choose the Lord as their guide. His sons chose something else. They were dishonest, they were corrupt, they were evil. And that was Samuel. And if Samuel can have bad kids, anybody can have bad kids. You know why? Because salvation is a choice. You can raise up a kid how to read his Bible every morning, how to, how to salute, how to say yes ma'am to women, how to treat people right. But when he gets old... He's going to have to choose his path. And a very few choose the narrow road because it's a road that only people that love Jesus Christ are going to get on. There's a big road. People go to church and they go to rallies and clap and holler and scream. But when they're out in the world, then their lifestyle is different because they haven't really chosen the narrow road. The narrow road has persecutions, even from within the church and family and friends. They will persecute you because you love Jesus more than anything else here on this earth. And from that, all the rivers of your life flow. Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 2. Hannah is speaking now, giving great salutation and exaltation unto the Lord. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. God is not fooled by the so-called good deeds of people, thinking that's going to get them in the back door of heaven. That's not. Only repentance and faith in Jesus Christ will get you into the kingdom of God. God weighs a man's heart. 
These are good, but they have to come from your heart. They have to be real. Verse 4, the bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren hath borne seven. And she that hath many children has waxed feeble. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth it up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and he lifted up. Boy, isn't that the truth? Whatever condition that you are in, be happy in that condition. Because you're not going to be like somebody else because God didn't make you like somebody else. God made you like you. That, that song, Who Made Who? Well, God made you and God made me. And he made us like a snowflake. Totally different from each other. Unique. And whatever road God has for you is not the same road God has for me. But the one person you want on the road with you, and that's the Son of God, Jesus Christ. When you're walking with Jesus Christ on that narrow road, that road will lead to heaven. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces out of heaven shall be thunder. Upon them the Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. And Elkanah went to Ramah to his house, and the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. So Samuel kind of took a one-way trip into uh, Jerusalem to uh, minister unto the Lord. Um, it is wonderful and beautiful. At this point in time, um, you will notice that we don't have a temple built. We have a tabernacle in Shiloh. And Jerusalem was their main stomping ground. And the priests obviously were in Jerusalem quite a bit. Um, Eli and his sons, they traveled around Israel Remember, the, um, the nation really is not united um, under a king yet. That's going to come later. There are still kind of splinter cell scattered around, so the priests move around. Jerusalem was their, kind of their head stomping ground, but the, the big tabernacle hasn't been built yet. Remember that. That doesn't come till Solomon. But they have the tabernacle, the tent, So, anyway, they went up, and Samuel went up. Elkanah went back to his home. And now Eli, the priest, is kind of his stepfather now. Verse 12. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. In other words, they were sons of demons. And they knew not the Lord, but they were in the ministry in the church. And we see that now. That's unfortunate. But people don't always get in the ministry because they love Christ, but they want to have prestige and not have to work hard and be well taken care of. That was Eli's sons. They were evil. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was in the seething with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand, and he stuck into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot all that the flesh hook brought up the priest took for himself. So they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came thither during the time of offerings. 
Also before they burnt the fat, the priest's servant came and said to the man that sacrifice, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh of thee but raw. And if any man said unto him, Let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then take as much as thy soul desireth, then he would answer him, Nay, but thou shalt give it to me now, and if not, I will take it by force. Wherefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. It's terrible when you have priests. We see that in the, the pseudo uh, Pontypuff church, you know, where so many of the the priests um, abused uh, young people in the congregation and the, the altar and the choir and all that. And, and it went on for years, you know, hurt a lot of people, made people hate the church. It's terrible. But judgment begins in the household of God. And uh, the overseers and preachers and the churches, when sin is brought to their attention, they need to address it. Because sin unchecked will destroy the lamp of God in your church, in your home, in your family, in your marriage. When you see f sin festering in your midst, address the problem. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child girded with a linen ephod. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord. And they went unto their own home. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and, and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. So Samuel is kind of the stepson now of Eli and the godly one, the only godly one that he had. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, Why do ye do such things? For I hear of your evil doings by all the people. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people to transgress. If one man sins against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sins against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. Eli should have cast them out of the temple, cast them out of the ministry, and told them to leave. Cast them out. If not, jail them for the, for the transgressions against the Lord and against the people. And the child Samuel grew on and was in favor, both with the Lord and also with men. There came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt and Pharaoh's house? And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon mine altar to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore, kick ye at my sacrifice and at mine offering, which I have commanded in mine habitation, and honorest thy sons above me, to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Wherefore, the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed, that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever and now. The Lord saith, Be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days come that I will cut off thine arm and the arm of thy father's house, and there shall not be an old man in thine house. And thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation and all the wealth which God shall give Israel, and there shall not be an old man in thine house forever. So the curse has come upon Eli and upon his home because he failed to correct his children who were under his wings but he refused to correct them. That has been the snare of many parents when they see their child, you know, they're perhaps uh, 
uh, preachers or ministers or have a Bible study or home church or whatever, and they fail to correct their children. That um, The children are, don't have to be perfect, but you can't let them run wild either and then correct other people in the church because judgment begins in the household of God. It begins in your own house first. So correct your children and don't bring the wrath of God upon yourself as you are ministering the word of God to the people. Correct your children. They, they, nobody said they're going to be perfect, but you got to correct them when they go wrong. Eli should have corrected his children, and things would have went well for him, but he refused. And the man of thine, whom I shall not cut off from mine altar, shall be to consume thine eyes and to grieve thine heart. And all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of their age. And this shall be a sign unto thee that shall come upon thy sons, Hophni and Phinehas, and one day they shall die, both of them. And I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is mine heart and in my mind, and I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before mine anointed forever. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left in thine house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread, and shall say, Put me, I pray thee, into one of the priest's offices, that I may eat a piece of bread. If I was Eli, I would walk right out, drag my sons out of the house of the Lord and out of the temple properties and say, Get out of here. You're done. I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. And cast them out. Uh, the things that they did... And, and that day would have brought capital punishment. But he refused to correct them. So if I was Eli, I would have most certainly drugged his children out of the ministry part of their life and, and made his own conscience clean. But he refused, and eventually God judged him and his whole family. Okay, from 1 Samuel chapter 2 in the Bears... Hall of Discipline. God bless you. Hope you enjoyed and uh, come back again soon. All right. See you. Bye.